Good afternoon. Myself, G. Revati, working as assistant professor in the Department of Electronics and Instrumentation Engineering at Eirok Chengundar Engineering College. First, I would like to thank my management, principal and uh, Perana coordinator, Dr. R. Kalaiwani for uh, providing me a wonderful chance to deliver a lecture on the topic infrared spectrophotometry from the subject analytical instruments. The contents that we are going to see in today's lecture are details about infrared spectrophotometry, principle of infrared spectrophotometry and its instrumentation, various types of radiation sources, sample cells and sampling techniques, different types of monochromatas, various types of deductors used in IR spectroscopy, deductors, applications. Finally, we will discuss the gate questions that have been asked in the previous year. Infrared spectrophotometry. The infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum extends from the red end of the visible spectrum to the microwave region. The infrared region of the spectrum is having wave numbers ranging from about 12,500 to 10 per centimeter or wavelength ranges from 0.8 to 1000 micrometer. Infrared spectroscopy is the instrument of the interaction of infrared radiation with matter by absorption, emission or reflection. It is used to study and identify chemical substance or functional groups in solid, liquid or gaseous forms. Infrared spectroscopy is the, is the measurement of the wavelength and intensity of the absorption of mid-infrared light by sample. It is one of the most powerful analytical techniques which offers the possibility of chemical identification. It is ideally suited for carrying out qualitative and quantitative analysis particularly with respect to the organic components. It has the great advantage over the other usual methods. This method will provide useful information about the structure of molecules quickly without trisome evaluation method. It is, it is also usable in inorganic compounds but the usage is limited because of the strong absorption of IR radiation by water. The different we have, the principle of infrared spectrometry is as follows. The IR spectroscopy theory utilizes the concept that molecules tend to absorb specific frequency of light that are characteristic to the corresponding structure of the molecules. The energies are reliant on the shape of the molecular surface associated vibranic coupling and the mass corresponding to the atoms. For instance, the molecule can absorb the energy contained in the incident light and the result is a faster rotation or the pronounced vibration. We have two different classes in IR instrumentation. They are dispersive and non-dispersive. Dis dispersive instruments are similar to UV visible dispersive spectrometer which uses prism or grating that we used to call it as monochromata. The difference is that the source must be an infrared source. The second type is non-dispersive instrument which is you which may use interference filter tunable laser source or an interferometer in the popular FTIR that means Fourier transform infrared spectrophotometer. We have three different type of infrared spectrophotometer. They are infrared spectrophotometer the wavelength range is about 0.8 to 2.5 the second one is mid infrared spectrophotometer the wavelength varies from 2.5 to 50 the last one is far infrared spectrophotometer the wavelength is about 50 to 1000 now we will see the different types of instruments that are used in infrared spectrophotometer as we can observe from the figure it has a IR source that is infrared uh, radiation source monochromator. The monochromator may be prism monochromator or grating monochromator. Then we will be having a reference and sample blocks. After that the beam splitter from the beam splitter it is given to the detector. Here we can use different types of detector. Finally the detected output is displayed in the readout. Radiation source. Radiation source. The source consists of an inert solid that is heated electrically to a temperature between 1500 to 2200 Kelvin. 
The source of radiation in IR spectrophotometer is ideally black body radiator. The energy emitted by a black body radiator varies with the length and temperature. In particular, increasing the temperature of the source raises the energy of emission enormously in the short wavelength region but has a relatively small effect as long wavelength. It requires a source of radiant energy which emit IR radiation which must be steady, intense enough for deduction and extend over the desired wavelength. We have different type of IR radiations they are as follows. They are nest glower, incandescent or tungsten lamp, mercury arc, global source and the last one is carbon dioxide. Nest glower, a hotter and therefore brighter source is the nest glower which has an operating temperature as high as 1500 degrees Celsius. Nest glower is constructed from fused mixtures of oxides of zirconium, yttrium and thorium mobile in the form of hollow rods. The rod dia will be 1 to 3 millimeter and 2.5 centimeter long. The ends of the rod are cemented to short ceramic tubes to facilitate mounting. They have negative temperature coefficient of resistance and must be preheated to be conductive. Therefore, auxiliary heater is provided and a ballast system is provided to prevent overheating once the glower becomes conductive. A glower must be prepared from the drafts but at the same time adequate ventilation is needed to remove surplus heat, evaporated oxides and binder. Radiation intensity is approximately twice that of nichrome and global source except in the near infrared region. Nursed glowers are fragile. The platinum leads or at the ends of the cylinder permit the passage of electricity. They have large temperature, negative temperature coefficient of electrical resistance and must be preheated to be conductive. The diagram is given on the parallel side we can view from it. The next is incandescent and tungsten lamp. Incandescent and tungsten lamp. It, uh, it has a tightly wound nichrome wire heated to about 1100 degree Kelvin by an electric current is a so good source of infrared radiation. The radiation produced is less intense than other sources but the wire sources are nearly maintenance free and requires no cooling. Device such as process analyzer often use nichrome wires as radiation source. A rhodium wire heater sealed in a ceramic cylinder has similar properties but it but it is more expensive or not much used. Incandescent lamp is an electric light which produces light with a filament wire heated to a high temperature by an electric current passing through it. The lamp consists of a wire filament, inert gas laid in wire, base and exhaust tube which we can view it from the diagram, from the given diagram. Normally, tungsten is used as a filament. The filament can also be made up of different materials based on the temperature range up to which the lamp needs to be operated. Some of the filaments with its melting point and boiling point temperature range are as follows. When we are using tungsten filament, the temperature should be about 5555 degrees Celsius. Boiling point temperature should be and the melting point temperature is about 3422 degrees Celsius. When we are using a platinum filament type, the melting point temperature is about 1768 degrees Celsius. Boiling point temperature is about 3825 degrees Celsius. When we are using molybdenum as filament type, the melting point is about 2623 degrees Celsius. Boiling point is about 4639 degrees Celsius. When you are using carbon as the filament type, the melting point is about 3550 degrees Celsius and boiling point is about 3825 degrees Celsius. When you are using osium as the filament type, the melting point temperature is about 3033 degrees Celsius, boiling point temperature is about 5012 degrees Celsius. Tungsten filament cathodes are available 
in the variety of filament sizes and configurations. The hot filament is enclosed in a hermetically sealed bulb of glass filled with an inert gas or it is evacuated. Based on the type of enclosing, it is classified as vacuum lamp and gas fill lamp and halogen lamp. In vacuum lamp, the filament acts as an electrical resistor which dissipates power proportional to the voltage applied times the current through the filament. When the power level is sufficient to raise the temperature to above 100 degree Kelvin, visible light is produced. The tungsten filament evaporates more rapidly as the temperature of the filament goes up. The evaporated tungsten particles tends to deposit on the glass envelope causing blackening of the envelope and it increases the obstruction of the light output. So, the lifetime gets reduced. The tungsten halogen lamp also called as quartz halogen lamp contain a small quantity of iodine within the quartz envelope that houses the tungsten filament. It is a special type of tungsten filament lamp. In this lamp a small amount of halogen that means fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Vapor is added to the inert gas of the bulb. Tungsten atoms evaporate from the hot filament and move toward the cooler wall of the bulb. The halogen in addition to the inert gas causes the evaporated tungsten to resettle back on the filament during cooling. The advantage of tungsten halogen lamp include it is more compact and has long life compared to the other two lamp and it produces a white light gives same output throughout the life throughout their life excellent optical control. The disadvantage is it, it the cost of this lamp is high. The iodine reacts with the gaseous tungsten and forms the volatile component. When the molecules of this compound strike the filament, decomposition occurs and tungsten redeposits on the filament. The process of redeposition increases the lifetime of the filament. The increased life, more efficiency and output in UV range along with IR and visible range makes it a favorable source of light in many modern scientific instruments. Lead in wire is an electrical conductor which carries current to the filament. The second source is mercury arc. It has the high pressure uh, mercury arc lamp that is used to provide radiations in the far infrared regions. This device consists of a quartz jacketed tube containing mercury vapor maintained at a constant pressure. The semantic diagram is given in the adjoining, we can view it in the adjoining figure. The passage of electricity through the vapor forms an internal plasma source that provides continue, continuation radiation in the far infrared region. The next radiation source is global source. Global source or we used to call it as global rod. A global rod is made up of, a global is a rod of silicon carbide which diets about 5 millimeter and 50 millimeter long which is electrically heated above, electrically heated to 1500 degree Kelvin. The rod can be heated up to, electrically heated up to 1300 to 1600 degree Celsius. It has a positive temperature coefficient of resistance and it can be controlled with a variable transformer. The term global is a combination of two words, glow and bar. The radiation of global rod is electromagnetic emission in the IR spectrum of visible light. A global is used in conjunction with interference filter to emit IR radiation in the middle IR spectrum of about 4 to 5 micrometer wavelength. Its resistance increase with the length of time used. So, provision must be made for increasing the voltage across the unit. It is often encased in a water cooled brass tube with a slot provided for the emission of radiation. The spectral output of the global is about 80% that of the black body radiation. The global rod has characteristics intermediate between the chrome coil and nursed filament. The next radiation source is carbon dioxide laser. 
A tunable carbon dioxide laser is used as an IR source for monitoring the concentration of atmospheric pollutants and for determining the absor absorbing species in the aqueous solution. This laser produces a band of radiation in the range of 100 to 19 micrometer consisting of about 100 closely spaced lines. The radiant power of the laser is significantly greater than that of the black body radiation source. We can see the carbon dioxide laser diagram in the parallel side. Next we will see about sample cells and sampling of substance. An infrared spectroscopy has been used for characterization of solid, liquid and gas samples. It is evident that samples of different phases have to be treated differently. However, the only common point for sampling of different phases is that cells must be transparent to the radiation. Sample handling is frequently the most difficult and time consuming part of IR spectrophotometry. The preparation of sample for IR spectrophotometry is often the most challenging task in obtaining the IR spectrum. Since almost all substances absorb IR radiation at some wavelength and solvents must be carefully chosen for the wavelength region and the sample of interest. The cells are also called as coverts that is used to hold the sample. A covert is a kind of cell usually a small square tube sealed at one end and other end is open to the atmosphere on the top or have a glass or teflon cap to seal it shut. These cells are made up of plastic, glass, fused silica or optical grade quartz. The selection of particular covert depends on the transparency in the spectral wavelengths of interest. For measurement in the visible region, coverts of plastic and optical glasses are sufficient. Quartz or fused silica is used to work in the UV region that the range is below 350 nm. Both of these substances are transparent in the visible region. Silica glasses can be employed in the region between 300 to 2000 nm. Crystalline sodium chloride is the most common cell windows in the IR region. Sample cells should be as clear as possible. The presence of any impurities in the cell might affect spectrographic reading. The cells are placed in the darkened chamber for analysis. We have three different types of sampling that is sampling of solids, sampling of liquids and sampling of gases. First we will see about sampling of solids. Solid, sam solid samples can be prepared in a variety of ways. Four techniques are generally employed for preparing solid samples. They are solid run in solution, solid films, mull technique, last one is pressed pellet technique. First we will see about solid run in solution. In this technique, the solid sample may be dissolved in a non-aqueous sol solvent provided that there is no chemical interaction between the sample and the solvent and the solvent should not observe any radiation in the range to be studied. A drop of solution is placed on the surface of alkali metal disc and the solvent is evaporated to dryness leaving a thin film of the solute. This is then mounted in the path of IR radiation for analysis and the spectrum is recorded. But this technique cannot be used for all solids because suitable solvent for each solid sample is limited in number and there is no single solvent which is transparent throughout IR region. It is very difficult to get solvent that does not observe any radiation. So some compensation needed to be done to eliminate the absorption due to solvent. In double beam spectrophotometer, the absorption of radiation due to solvent in the sample cell is compensated by placing a reference cell with solvent alone in the reference beam path. The second is solid films. If the solid is amorphous in nature and then the sample is deposited on the surface of a potassium bromide or sodium chloride cell by evaporation of solution of the solid sample. Molten sample is allowed to dry to form a thin flame on potassium bromide or sodium chloride substrate. 
and ensure that the solid film is not too thick to pass the radiation. This technique is useful for rapid qualitative identification of polymers but not good for carrying the quantitative analysis. The third technique is MUL technique. Samples of solid that are not soluble in IR transparent solvent or those which are not conveniently pellet in the sodium potassium bromide are prepared with MUL technique. In this technique, few milligrams of the sample is crushed with a mortar or with pulverizing equipment. A few drops of mineral oil or fluorinated hydrocarbon oil is added to form a smooth paste. The usual mull is pressed between the salt plates to form a thin flame. Silver chloride, sodium chloride, potassium bromide, cesium iodide plates are normally used in this technique. This is then mounted in the path of IR radiation for analysis and the spectrum is recorded. The last technique is pressed pillar technique. It is one of the most popular technique for handling solid samples and it is allowed for compressed pellet technique. In this technique, a small amount of finely ground solid sample is mixed with, the, with about 100 times its weights of potassium bromide powder that is 1 milligram sample is mixed with 100 mg of dry potassium bromide. This powder mixture is compressed in a mechanical pressure to form a small transparent disc with a very smooth surface and it looks like glass. The disc is transparent to IR ra radiation with very smooth surface and it looks like a glass. The disc is transparent and it is held in the instrument, be instrument beam for spectroscopic examination. Since this technique uses potassium bromide for pelleting, it is also called as KBR pelleting. Sampling of liquids. The next is about sampling of liquids. The samples that are liquid at room temperature are usually put frequently with no preparation into a rectangular cells made of NaCl, KBR or thorium bromide and their IR spectra are obtained directly. The sample thickness should be so selected that the transmitter lies between 50 to 70 percentage. For double beam work, matched cells are generally employed. One cell will contain the sample while the other will have a solvent used in the sample. Matched cells must have same thickness. All cells should be protected from moisture because they dissolve in water. For similar reasons, organic liquid samples must be dried before pouring into the cells. The last is about sampling of gases. This gas sample is put into a special cell generally about 10 cm long which is then kept across the path of IR beam. The end of the cells, the end walls of the cells are generally made up of NaCl. For measuring very dilute gases, long path cells are to be employed. The next block is our monochromator. monochromators. Monochromators are used to select desired frequencies and reject the other frequencies. We have two different types of monochromator. They are prism monochromator and grating monochromator. The function of this device is to separate the spectral line of interest from the spectral lines with the different wavelengths. Generally, the monochromatist will have entrance slit, dispersing device and an exit slit. The entrance slit selects the defined beam of a polychromatic light from the source. The dispersing device causes the different wavelengths of the light in the source beam to be dispersed at different angles. The exit slit selects a particular wavelength to pass through it and in turn produces the required monochromatic light. Ideally, a monochromator produces truly monochromatic light, but in practice it emits an optical symmetrical band of a certain narrow wavelength range. The selection of bandwidth size depends on the size of the exit slit width. Any change in size of the slit width changes the instrumental width of the monochromatic light. The width of the band at the half its height is called instrumental bandwidth. This instrumental bandwidth decides about the strength of the monochromatic light and its ability to analyze the sample. For example, different bandwidths of 
selection of yellow color light from the monochromator and its analysis capa capability for each band can be analyzed. If the bandwidth is wide, it not only contains the interested light of yellow color, along with the light of interest, it also contains nearby lights of orange and green color. Since it contains more than one light, the analysis with the wide bandwidth light will not give accurate result. If the bandwidth is normal, though it has only yellow color, the analysis will not give accurate result due to increase in the bandwidth size. If the bandwidth is narrow, it has only the light of interest of yellow color. It is suitable for most accurate analysis. The narrow bandwidth size can be as small as 0 0.01 nanometer. As I already told, the dispersion device can be either prism monochromator or grating monochromator. Depending on this, the dispersion is divided. First, we will see about prism monochromator. Prism monochromator, it works on the principle that the refractive index of each material is different for the radiation of different wavelength. If the parallel beam of radiation falls on a prism, the radiation of two different wavelengths will be bent through different angles. Isolation of these two wavelengths is easy if there is greater difference between the two angles. The prism monochromator generally consists of the following components, radiation source, entrance slit, collimating mirror, prism, lit roof mirror and an exit slit. It can be either lit roof mirror or a focusing length. Light from the source is made into parallel beam and made to fall on a prism after it is passed through entrance slit and mirror. The entrance slit is placed in such a way that in such a way that it focuses the radiation to the mirror. The prism disperses the light and photons of different wavelengths are deflected at different angles. The light of any one wavelength can be selected by moving a slit across the focal plane. The required wavelength passes through the slit and the other wavelengths are blocked. In this prism monochromator, the position of the exit slit can be changed to select the particular wavelength. It is also possible to select the required wavelength by changing the position of the prism. Prism may be made up of glass or quartz. The glass prisms are suitable for radiation essentially in the visible range whereas quartz prism can cover UV spectrum also. It has the advantage right it can cover a greater range and simplicity. We can use halogen salts also, then crystalline components can also be used. We have two different types of monochromator, they are single beam monochromator and another one is double beam monochromator. The next is about grating monochromator. The grating is a block of glass with one surface coated with highly reflective aluminium and scored either mechanically or holographically with parallel grooves spaced closely together. The grooves must be straight, evenly spaced, parallel and identical shape. Usually gratings with 500 to 3000 grooves per millimeter are used. It also has a radiation source, entrance slit, monochromatic grating, exit slit and detectors. Finally, the sample cell is available. Radiation of more than one wavelength enters the grating monochromator through the entrance slit and it falls on the concave mirror. This beam is then reflected on the grating at an angle and it is dispersed. The dispersed radiation is directed to the exit slit through another concave mirror. The range of wavelength isolated through the grating monochromator is determined by the extent of dispersion through the grating and with the width of the exit slit. So by moving the grating or exit slit, it is possible to allow radiation of per only a particular wavelength to pass through the exit slit. The advantage of have using grating monochromator is all, it is not attacked by moisture content. It can be used over considerable wavelength. It is surety and it has, it has the capacity to long last, long lasting lifetime. Diffraction gratings are cheaper, easier to make and provide superior performance. 
gratings which are made with metals like aluminium are not easily attacked by moisture as already stated. On the other hand, metal salt prisms are subjected to etching from the atmospheric moisture. Now we will see about the detectors that we are going to use in IR spectrophotometer. Detectors are generally used to measure the intensity of unabsorbed infrared radiations. Thermal type of detectors are widely used in IR spectrophotometer, but in near IR region photoconductivity cell is generally used as the radiant power is low for IR region it means that the detector signal will also be low. In order to locate these low signal a pre-amplifier is fixed to the detector and the radiation beam is modulated. So to detect these kinds of signal thermal detectors must process a short response time and absorbed heat must be lost rapidly. There are various types of detectors they are as follows thermocouple, bolometer, thermistor, goli cell and pyroelectric transducers or pyroelectric detectors. Thermocouple. Thermocouple is made up of two wires welded together at both ends. The two wires are from different metals such as bismuth and antimony. It works on the principle of Seebeck effect that is when the two junctions are maintained at different temperature potential gets developed across the junction. Thermocouple is closed in an evacuated steel casing with a potassium bromide window to avoid losses of energy by convection. In IR spectroscopy one welded joint is carefully screened in a protective box and kept at constant temperature called cold end or cold junction. The other welded joint which is exposed to IR radiation is called hot end or hot junction. Based on the intensity of IR radiation falling on the hot junction, the temperature of the junction increases. The increase in temperature at hot junction increases the difference in temperature between the two junction and in turn increases the potential difference. The generated potential difference in the wire is the function of temperature difference between the junctions and therefore the intensity of IR radiation falling on the hot junction can be calculated. A well designed thermocouple is capable of responding to temperature difference of 10 power minus 6 Kelvin. Thermocouples are having very low sensitivity and it can be increased by using thermopile. Thermopile means it is a series of connections of several thermocouples. The sensitivity increases n times for a series connected n number of thermocouples. Thermocouples are usually encapsulated and carefully shielded from thermal radiation emitted by other nearby objects. Spectral sensitivity also depends on the transmission of encapsulation window. Thermocouples are having slow response time and it cannot be used as a detector for FDIR spectroscopy. The advantage of thermocouple is it very simple. The next detector is bolometer. Bolometer is a type of resistance thermometer constructed with the strips of metal such as platinum, nickel, semiconductor or from a mixture of metal oxide. It is used for measuring the energy of incident electromagnetic radiation via the heating of a material with a temperature dependent electrical resistance. These materials exhibit a relatively large change in the resistance as a function of temperature. A bolometer consists of an observative element such as thin layer of metal connected to a heat sink through a thermal link. The heat sink is a thermal reservoir body of constant temperature. When the radiant power to be detected is incident on the observer, its temperature gets changed. Heat is allowed to flow from the observer to a heat sink which is maintained at a fixed temperature by thermal conductance. If thermal conductance is higher then more rapidly the heat leaks. From the adjoining figure we can observe the arrangement of a bolometer bridge. 
It is similar to Wheatstone Bridge. Among the four arms of the bridge, the bolometer is placed in one of the arm and the remaining three arms are having fixed and variable resistors to adjust the bridge balance, to adjust the bridge balance condition. Initially, when there is no radiation, the bridge is maintained at balance condition by allowing certain amount of current to flow through all the resistors and bolometer. At balance, the voltage at B and D are of same value and galvanometer reaches the value of zero current. When the higher radiation falls on the bolometer, the temperature increases and in turn resistance of the bolometer arm changes. So the current flowing through the arm changes and the bridge is unbalanced. Under unbalanced condition, the voltage at B and D are of different values. This voltage difference makes the current to flow through the galvanometer and this current is a measure of the intensity of radiation falling on the bolometer. Metal bolometer usually works without cooling. They are produced from thin foils or metal foils. Most of the bolometers use semiconducting materials that is germanium or silicon as observative elements rather than metals. At very low temperature, the relative change of semiconductor resistance are higher and observing samples are thicker. It makes greater absorption. So high sensitivities can be obtained by using these devices at cryogenic temperature. Bolometers have sensitivities comparable to those of the photonic detectors in the far infrared spectrum. The next detector is thermistor. It is similar to bolometer. It uses the principle of change in resistance for temperature change. The change in temperature occurs due to change in radiation. These thermistors are available in many types such as bead, lead, disc type, etc. It consists of a fuse to mixture of metal oxides and it has negative temperature coefficient of electrical resistance. That is, increase in temperature reduces the resistance and vice versa like bolometer Thermistor can also be connected in Wheatstone bridge for the measurement of radiation. From the adjoint figure, we can note it is a Wheatstone bridge with one arm as thermistor connected and the other three arms are having resistors which are used to balance the circuit where there is no radiation. Initially, the bridge is in balanced condition with the absence of radiation upon the thermistor and the battery is used to give proper supply for the circuit, the galvanometer is connected to read the radiation value. While the bridge is, ba bridge is in balanced condition, galvanometer reaches zero value. When higher radiation falls on the thermistor, the bridge becomes unbalanced due to change in resistance in thermistor, which causes the current to flow through the galvanometer. The amount of current flowing through the galvanometer is a measure of intensity of radiation falling on the detector. The next detector is Gole cell. Gole cell, it is also called as pneumatic detector. It was described by Gole, so it is known as Gole cell. It is used to measure the intensity of IR radiation by the principle of expansion of gas upon heating. The Gole cell comprises of a chamber containing xenon which is having low thermal conductivity. This chamber is of cylindrical in shape, is closed by a blackened metal plate at one end and by a flexible membrane with the mirrored surface on its other side. We can infer it from the adjoining diagram. When the infrared radiation is allowed to fall on the blackened metal plate, it heats the gas which causes it to expand. The expansion in gas produces a corresponding rise in pressure and therefore a distortion of the mirror diaphragm takes place. Light from the lamp which is placed inside the detector housing can be focused on the diaphragm which reflects the light onto a photocell. Movements of the diaphragm corresponding to the incident radiation changes the incident light energy on the photocell surface which causes a change in the photocell output and it, the change in photocell output will provide the IR radiation.
the last detector is pyroelectric detectors pyroelectric detectors are constructed from a single crystalline wafers of pyroelectric materials which are insulators that is dielectric materials with very special thermal and electrical properties pyroelectric materials are triselene sulfate deuterated triglyne sulfate and some polymers among these detectors triglyne sulfate is the most important polyelectric material used in the construction of infrared detection system the property of pyroelectric material are such that when an electric field is applied across it electric polarization occurs as it happens in any dielectric medium the degree of polarization is always temperature dependent the pyroelectric transducer is constructed by sandwiching a thin film of pyroelectric material between two electrodes this is similar to the capacitor and it is temperature dependent capacitor upper electrode of the pyroelectric detector is transparent to ir radiation and the radiation is allowed to fall on it in order to obtain small thermal time constant pyroelectric detectors are manufactured onto suspended membranes bottom electrode and mirror form a resonant cavity for ir radiation by splitting the upper electrode two capacitors are formed which are connected in series to reduce noise caused by the mechanical vibrations when the transparent plate is irradiated with ir radiation it alters the charge distribution across two electrodes that is heating effect of incident ir radiation causes a change in polarization of the material it can be measured by connecting the two electrodes with an external circuit pyroelectric detectors exhibit fast response time so they are mostly used in fourier transform infrared instruments if the temperature of a dielectric capacitor changes by difference in temperature and then polarization by difference in pressure the surface charge will be inducted with a density and in the external circuit the current flows the magnitude of current flowing through the external circuit is a measure of polarization of the material which in turn is a function of ir radiation exposed to the transducer the other type of detector is photoconductive cell photoconductivity is the process of assisting an electron in the valence band to escape into the conduction band by absorbing the energy of an incident photon when a photon arrives with an energy of h mu which is greater or equal to the band gap energy of the material an electron can escape from the valence band into the conduction band and can be detected as an increase in electrical current in the device photoconductive materials should possess the following characters such as high spectral sensitivity in the wavelength of region of interest higher quantum efficiency higher pro photoconductive gain higher speed of response lesser noise photoconductive cell consists of a thin film of semiconducting material such as lead sulfate cadmium sulfide lead selenide indium gallium arsenide indium antimonide mercury cadmium telluride deposited on the surface of an insulating material this arrangement is kept in an evacuated glass envelope thickness of a photosensitive layer should be high enough to absorb the incident radiation and low enough to decrease the dark conductance when the photoconducting transducer is irradiated with ir it promotes non conducting electrons in the valence state to a higher energy conducting state so the electrical resistance of the semiconductor decreases the increase in radiation power on the photoconducting transducer increases the number of electrons promotions from valence band to the conduction band and in turn increases the current flow the measurement of output current is a measure of amount of radiation falling on the photoconducting transducer pbs is used to is used in near ir region mercury cadmium telluride 
can be used in the mid ir and far ir but can but must be cooled to 77 degree kelvin it has good sensitivity and these detectors have better response characteristics than pyroelectric detectors it is good for fourier transform infrared spectrometer and couple techniques the last is about recorder the amplified signal is recorded by a pen recorder this instrument optically balances out differential between two beams this kind of instrument is called optical null recording spectrometer more sophisticated instruments are called ratio recording instruments in this instruments the intensity of both sample and reference beams are measured and ratioed the output of the ir spectrum spectrophotometer is uh, will be displayed in the waveform as displayed in the diagram the applications of ir spectrophotometer are as follows it is used in protein characterization and uh, nanoscale semiconductor analysis and space exploration it is also used in the analysis of gaseous liquids or solid samples it is used in identification of various types of organic and certain inorganic compounds widely used in qual quantitative analysis then information regarding functional groups of molecules and constitution of molecules can be detected detected from ir spectrum to it is also widely used to know about the interaction among molecules now we will see about certain questions get questions which have been asked in the previous years okay new gel means have you, i have already discussed about this word new gel it is used in sampling of solids that too in mull technique a new gel means it consists of silver chloride sodium chloride potassium bromide cesium iodide it is a it has a few drops of mineral oil or fluorinated hydrocarbon oil here we have four different options new gel mean it comes under mineral oil it contains few drops of mineral oil so the answer is mineral oil the second question which of the following is used in calibration of ir instrument it's obviously polystyrene that is used in the calibration of ir instrument when you move on to the next question which material are used to prepare a rod of global source global source already we have seen that global is a rod of silicon carbide with a die of 5 to 10 mm and a 20 to 50 mm length so obviously the answer is silicon carbide the next question which temperature is required for nursed glower to produce ir radiation as previously we have seen it is a hotter and brighter source the nest glower which has an operating temperature of about as high as 1500 degree celsius so the range lies between as it is above 1500 degree celsius so the answer is 1000 degree celsius to 1800 degree celsius okay next question which compounds are used as a dilute in ir sampling it's obviously alkali halide that is used as a compound for dilute diluting in ir sampling next monochromatic filter are made up of monochromatic filter we are, we have already seen what is the use of monochromatic monochromatic is used to select a particular wavelength and frequency from the radiation source and it is used to reject the other radiations of different wavelengths and different frequencies the monochromatic filter is generally made up of lithium fluoride next question which detector or detected ir radiation by potential difference when it comes to potential difference the only choice we have is thermocouple we ha i have already stated it is made up of two different types of wire that are welded together at the both end it has a hot junction and cold junction 
Okay, the answer is thermocouple. The next question, nursed glower consists of, nursed glower consists of all the above, that is zirconium, yttrium and chromium. Nursed glower consists of all the three that are mobiled in the form of hollow rods. The rod length is about 2.5 centimeter and the dia is about 1 to 3 millimeter. Next. Incandescent lamp, in incandescent lamp how much temperature is required to produce IR radiation? As we have seen incandescent lamp, it is an electric light which produces light with filament wire heated to a temperature by electric current passing through it. There are different types of filament types, they are tungsten, platinum, molybdenum and uh, osium. As they did not uh, state the filament type. The general temperature range is about 1100 degree Celsius. So, the answer is 1100 degree Celsius. The last question, global source required IR radiation temperature. The radiation temperature of global rod, we have already seen the temperature range should be 1000 to 1800 degree Celsius. Okay, it has to be electrically heated to that range so that only where the rod will emit the light. Thank you.